Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Chris Kiefer, this is Eddie Laird, and this is RacerXOnline.com with another garage build. This one specifically a 2024 YZ450F. If you remember last year, my good buddy here, Eddie, tried to go to Mammoth, which he did. He did good. I wouldn't say he did great, but he did good. We're gonna try to redo this this year with a different colored machine, obviously the Yamaha. Uh, near and dear to my heart, I let it slide over to Eddie. And now he is in control of this thing. And honestly, he did a really, really great job with this build. I wasn't even gonna stick this bike in uh, our garage build series, but it looks so good and there's so much done to this bike. I thought, you know what, we need to do this. So uh, get ready. I have the megaphone here just in case you can't hear Eddie on your TV or a computer or however you're watching this. Um, if you guys need him to speak up, we have this here for you. But uh, nonetheless, Eddie, take it over. Start from the beginning. Uh, tell the people what you've done to this YZ450F. I know a lot about it. Maybe I'll interject on some things, but let them know what's going on. Yeah, so obviously we started with the 24 uh, YZ450, which is a phenomenal platform from the beginning. I actually uh, rode this bike a few months back uh, in stock trim and just fell in love with it on some of the nastiest tracks we ride in the desert. So I told Chris, uh, I knew it was going to be a hard, uh, a hard thing to overcome for Chris to release this thing. It was to a me. hard sell, but we got through it. But uh, yeah, we, we were able to pull it off. So yeah, I mean, you know, the 24 Yamaha 450 uh, new chassis in 23. So got a really, um, it's really good. It's a really good bike and stock trim. But uh, obviously, us vet guys, we got to make them look pretty to go to go good and go fast. So that's what I'm. Uh, I love to do. So yeah, basically this bike engine package is completely stock, uh, stock ECU, but with your mappings that you've come up with over the years. So currently two maps I run is the Kiefer One Race and then the Kiefer Connect map. Um, those are the two I bounce back and forth for the tracks here in Southern California. So uh, engine package, that's basically where that stands. Um, stock gearing, uh, 49 rear sprocket. We got a PC uh, tie six pipe on to uh, basically just make it sound cool because it doesn't need any more power. It does manipulate the power, but we're gonna talk about that here after we ride. Um, but yeah, obviously it lightens up the bike a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we did that. And then obviously all our little trinket stuff, you know, um, we played, I played a lot with triple clamps on this motorcycle uh, because I was having a little issue with the new chassis being a little rigid yep. in area one of the corner entering the corners. So we tried some X trigs, those were really good. Um, but maybe just uh, amplified the rigidity a little bit for me. So I went back to stock. I ran stock clamps for a while, which I found very comfortable, but the 22 millimeter offset for me was a little aggressive and yeah. steering kind of leaned a little towards Honda-ish with the rigid chassis and the aggressive front end. So uh, Adrian, we have these 23 and a half with Adrian that he actually increased uh, in removing some of the webbing to give them a little more flex. So first time I tried those, uh, that, that was it was a good fit for the motorcycle. I did run the uh, stock Yamaha bar mounts. Okay. I like I like that bar mount uh, location. That bar mount, from what I'm understanding, on the extra clamp is about three to five millimeters further forward. Yep. So for a bigger guy like myself, that kind of helps me open the cockpit up. Uh, that was. A huge improvement for the motorcycle. Obviously, I got uh, some awesome coatings done by the guys at Precision Works. Uh, <laughs> Listen, people at home, <laughs> uh, I've heard about these coatings for about four months. I mean, I can't wait to get coatings, 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 coatings. You vet guys, you love this stuff. Now, it does make a difference on the lower tubes a little bit, makes yep. it a little bit slicker. Um, but for most part, look it, let's face it, it's, it's for looks. It's for looks, it is, 100%, it, it's for looks. Um, but yeah, so we got that stuff with those guys. They were nice enough to help us out. Uh, obviously, Steve is shock therapy. He's been doing my suspension on the last few of my garage builds, so everything stayed the same there. Uh, let's see, I mean, run down the list. Obviously, we always use Henson, Works Connection, the ZRT throttle tubes. I won't ride a motorcycle without them anymore. <clears throat> All Renthal products, handlebars. I run a full waffle grip, um, uh, sprockets, DID chains. Um, GY, this thing has some GYTR stuff on it. The, uh, the ignition covers. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it just changes the whole look of the motorcycle. Uh, Lightspeed, Lightspeed's been part of a few of my builds lately. So they do all my carbon fiber stuff. W always takes care of our wheels. And uh, Twin Air has, has power flow kit in it. I, so the Twin Air power flow kit, everyone's like, why are you put it in? You always say it's so fast. I didn't really go for 
the horsepower side of the power flow kit i went for the accessibility yep. and it's a lot easier to work with you know getting away from that stock plate with the cage over the top so uh yeah i mean that's uh the majority and then of course we had to finish it with race tech titanium bolt kit so wow uh, here this, we go this bike's this is a true vet build people yeah. you're sticking titanium on your motorcycle you either a got permission from your wife <laughs> or b didn't tell her and you're going to be in trouble later yeah so this bike is pretty much outfitted head to toe minus axles linkage anything that has a flex characteristics triple clamps and stuff like that we don't put it there because the bike already kind of leans a little bit on the rigid rigidity side so i don't want to add a stiffer bolt to make it more rigid and then uh yeah throttle syndicate graphic kit seat uh i got the gut seat foam yeah flat underneath top this. yep so flat top plus 14 millimeters tall there's nothing worse than a yamaha stock seat out there uh my butt is cringing right now just thinking about it uh i got some bag balm in the van just in yeah. case for today because i'm gonna ride eddie's bike um but overall yeah it looks really cool i'm gonna send you out on this thing at Glen helen right now and ride yep. it uh not to be outdone we saw the mx14 rear scoop you guys are going to see the track today maybe a little bit hard pack Nonetheless, this rear tire is unbelievable for a wide variety of terrain. We'll talk about all this as well, the chassis mods, some of the maps, and the things that Eddie needed to change within this bike to make him happy. So we'll be right back, and uh, again, we'll have the megaphone here in just case you can't hear Eddie. <laughs> See you in a minute. Edward, this is your bike, but I'm going to present to you guys some things that I feel like needs to be addressed with the Yamaha. So a couple things. One, this frame, although better in corners, has more rigidity. So what I get on the track is I get a little bit of a stiffer nature feel. That bump touch is not as compliant as the 2022 Yamaha, and it's a little bit more finicky to set up per track. So what we call track toughness. I don't feel like the track toughness of this machine is as good as the older frame. The Yamaha guys are gonna yell at me later after they see this video, but that's what I feel, it's my opinion. Eddie really wanted to ride a Yamaha this year. We could, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> he comes from a Kawasaki, he loves Kawasaki, but he's had that for a while. He did that last year, so I'm like, let's get you on the Yamaha. It has enough engine. I don't think you gotta do anything to the engine. We'll map it and, uh, but now he is starting to see some of the things that I have felt. Um, so let's address what you did. Let's start with the chassis. So there's not a lot done besides the clamps and suspension. You left stock engine mounts on my bike. I put FCP mounts on. So um, give us a little bit of feedback. 22 millimeter offset compared to Ride Engineering's 23.5. Yeah, so the, the 23 and a half front clamp, it, it actually those clamps serve two purposes for me. One, we, we learned with Adrian, he took a lot of the webbing out of the clamp, made them a little softer. So that helped a little bit with the bump compliancy that you were talking about, the rigidity. Just felt a little more comfortable in my hands. Um, this bike doesn't really need to be a super aggressive steering motorcycle with the 22 clamps. So when I ran it with the stock clamps, I just dropped the forks flush. Right. Um, when I, as I started to build on my suspension program to try to get that initial part of the suspension a little more comfortable to suit this new frame style um, I felt like it started to get a little knifey you know like it tried to it started to get real directional and point and shoot so that's when I went with these 23 and a half and that kind of smoothed out some of my corner stuff you know um, kind of just area one to two that transfer in there I just felt like it was more linear more more controllable not so jaggy all right I'm gonna do a couple rapid fire questions you just say Yes or no? Uh -huh. Okay, so with the 23.5 Ride Engineering clamps, do you get better uh, feeling through your bars on bump touch? Yes. Okay, 23.5 clamps compared to 22 clamps. Do you get less off-throttle twitchiness? Yes. What's one thing that is a negative with these clamps compared to the stock clamp? I'm putting you on the spot, sorry. Um, 
I, I honestly, man, I didn't really. So there's more upside for you than negative. Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't. I don't. There is no negative to what they have. You know, I mean, for what I've run and I've run multiple clamps on this bike, there was no real negative to I will, their. I will bring up a negative for me. Uh, one negative for me on t on these is I feel like the stock clamp is a little bit softer feeling when I hit a square edge really hard. Now, saying that the 23.5 clamp is calmer so if i'm going through those bumps i don't get as much twitchiness as i do the 22 but the 22 that initial touch is a little i'm sorry the 22s are a little bit softer right so it's just a little give and take if you're looking for less feedback through your bars side to side movement or you're getting some head shake or a little twitchiness off throttle this offset will help that for sure okay Pretty all right sure. now i can't talk about his suspension um shock therapy has done this you've gone through three iterations of this obviously sometimes yeah. when you guys go do your suspension okay and you go there hey I, i'm this weight i'm this level this is what i ride and your suspension tuner doesn't nail it the first time you need to calm down yeah relax because you guys freak out they didn't nail it it's very difficult to nail a setting on your first try give your suspension tuner the benefit of the doubt and be ready to help him and guide him to get yourself a better setting. It might take two times. It might take three times. Hell, sometimes they might nail it the first time. Yeah. But you and Steve have been doing this stuff for yeah. a couple of weeks. Where are we at? Yeah, we're. I mean, we're getting a lot closer. Uh, I'm still, like I said, like I think we spoke about earlier. I'm still having a little issue with that first part of the, you know, area one of the corner where you get that chop. The front end's obviously loaded. Um, I'm still getting a little bit of harshness to my hands. So uh, we're, we're, uh, that's what we're currently trying to work on now. Basically everything off the top 15% of the fork to the bottom, hard hits, you know, coming down these hills at Glen Helen where it's choppy. I have a lot of compliancy there. Bike feels good. I'm not scared to hit the big bumps. I have a lot of stability through the straight line. So um, as far as that part of my suspension is good, my shock is amazing. I, I don't think we've really touched much on the shock, but a couple clickers here and there just to to uh, try to help maybe a little bit with the forks. Okay. But yeah, shock's good. So from where we started stock to now, we have more compliancy, a little bit calmer Yamaha, and still corners well. Yes. Okay, moving on. Engine, not a lot done, people. The engine on the Yamaha is excellent. Lots of front side, uh, revs really far. Third gear, although not quite as usable as in years past, still probably has the most usable third gear out of all the 450s available now, yep. which for us, vet guys is a blessing oh. we love that right so the maps that i've created for eddie um, just helps a little bit out of corners not so herky-jerky um, we call it the on off feeling as you're cornering or inside of a rut so it doesn't upset the chassis and then it gives you a broad feeling um you're 200 235 right now 235 you still need a lot of mo motor being 235 yeah. pounds but yet you don't want it to rip it rip your arms yep. out and 20 minute motos you gotta last. Yeah. So, pro circuit, tie six. What that's gonna do is gonna give you a little bit less bottom in, and uh, get a little bit less touch, but actually broaden that mid range. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of talk about. Yeah, it just it, the PC muffler just kind of smoothed it across the spectrum for me. Kind of made it the transition from you know say low, mid, high. If you would look at it on a graph that way, it just kind of made it a little more linear across there. Um, it, it was not. A massive in performance enhancement. It's not. Uh, it's adjusting the power. People. Yeah. Unless you're on a Kawasaki KX 450, yep. you're not gonna get any more power from any other bike with an aftermarket muffler. Yeah. You're just shaping the power. So you'll see in in, in the videos that uh, Simon took some of the the live video stuff. You'll hear the bike is kind of lugging in some of the corners. When we shot earlier, it was kind of deep. Uh, some of the sand berms were deep, and and that's all third gear with a 230 pound guy. So yeah, you'll have to. You know kind of wake it up a little bit but i mean one little flick of the clutch and it's the power's right there so it is it is very very um i rode that on key for one race it is very manageable for a third gear bike at, at a track like glen Helen with a, a guy my size on it um really quick before we move on to the ergo part of it compared to your kawasaki that we had last year and now we have this engine which engine do you prefer uh, this this one this one yeah it, th so when I kind of was fighting with the chassis and and uh, we had numerous phone calls and I'm sure you were beating your head against the wall and <laughs> and I was scratching my head at the same time 
I always came back to the to the engine on this bike. I'm like, man, I I, I would love to get back on a on a Cowie or the newer 24 Cowie because the chassis is a lot more compliant for as much as I ride. It, it was a, a better fit for me. But I, every time I want to do it, I always come back to how comfortable this engine is and how yep. easy it is to ride in and out of the third corner. gear is the magic gear, and this one yep. allows you to do that. Okay, uh, we have a tall, flat seat foam from Guts, yep. a throttle syndicate cover. We have Renthal Fat Bar 839 bend bars, full waffle rent Renthal soft grips. Explain the setup. Oh, so one more thing. Works connection foot peg mounts and pro titanium foot pegs. Yeah, so it, it's kind of funny because you, you hear a lot of people talk about these new generation, even the 22 Hondas, how they suit the taller rider. You hear, I hear it a lot in the Supercross guys and in, in some of these intros. When I got on it, it, I felt kind of the opposite. I was like, man, I, I feel a little cramped on this bike. I started on this bike with uh, Renthal Twinwall 996s. Wow. Stay. Yeah. So, and those came off right away with obviously what we were dealing not with. Not right away. Yeah. It's not right away. He's Sorry, lying. It, it takes a long time for him to change anything. He's stuck in his ways. Yep. He's stubborn. And I said, it's too stiff. You're a vet rider. You don't need twin wheels. Yeah. So yeah, we when we did uh, the ergos on this bike, I changed a lot. Most people would probably think a lot of the things I did on this bike are really drastic. We, we ran the 22 foot peg mounts, which are five millimeters down, five millimeters back, which I think you you were the one to put that together with yep. Eric at Works Which they did stock for the new bike. Right, so we did, uh, yeah, we did that on this bike. And then I added the pro pegs. I went with the plus 14 Ooh. flat seat foam. Okay. So they actually make a taller one. They actually make like a 21 or something. Okay. But I went plus 14 with that handlebar, um, like Chris said, the 839 handlebar. And then that stock bar mount with the uh, ride clamp moves the bar about five millimeters further forward. And uh, man, the, the ergonomics on this bike for me are the best I've ever been on. And that's tough for me to say because I feel at home on a Kawasaki. Uh, for me, I'm six foot. You're six? Six one-ish. I think a standard height is best for me. I do like the flat top. That stock seat, <laughs> my ass is not yeah. fond of that thing. I'm out. So Very round. No good for me. Um, I like an 839 fat bar. I use that on a Kawasaki. It's uh, 92 millimeters in height, so that's a good bend for six foot guys. Not a lot of sweep. It's around 54, 56, I think. 53. 53, okay. Yep. And uh, yeah, so for me, a very neutral bend. And, the rise, uh, what I like about that bar is the rise is very flat. You yep. know, when you talk about rise, it's this portion of the bar here. Yep. It doesn't get up on you, so you can move that bar where you want it front to back and you don't start changing the angle of where your hands are positioned. So that's what really won me on this bar because this bar is 803 millimeters wide and I'm not a narrow bar guy. That's why I like 996 twin walls or 811. But this setup with all this stuff we've done to the um, ergos of the chassis just makes it very comfortable for me. All right, little bits and pieces here before we wrap this thing. Obviously he's running a hydraulic clutch um, I'm 50-50 I'm on it. I could go with it. I could go without it. I like a cable feel. Um, we have noticed that you do have to bleed this thing quite a bit. Today, it kind of was going out a little bit in the corner, so you might have to bleed it more than you would normally have to. I don't never have to bleed anything on a KTM. No. So. Which is kind of odd because it's very Brembo. I mean, it's a Brembo master yep. cylinder. We can all see that. The slave cylinder is very kite Brembo-ish. Okay. So. Um, I, I haven't had an issue with it. Like I said earlier, this bike's around 25 hours on it. I haven't had an issue with it, but today shooting photos, a little bit warmer today. I noticed uh, Are we going it, back to cable? It was getting a little fade. Are we going back to cable? You know, I can, I'm with you. I can go 50-50. I, I rode this bike first. Um, before I got our bike, I rode the bike I was riding, had a cable clutch, and I had zero problems with it whatsoever. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, GYTR covers looks really cool. Obviously, um, the stator cover looks really nice. It's Svano. Uh, carbon fiber from Lightspeed. Uh, very trick, cool. Also, very protective kind of covers, wraps around. Yep. Um, when he revs the bike, it doesn't vibrate. Sometimes you get some carbon or skid plates that on D cell rev, it goes zzz, zzz, and it, it's annoying as crap. Um, so that, it's very Sano, very clean, doesn't do that. Works connection radiator guards, uh, little works connection trinkets around here. Renthal sprockets, DID ERT3 chain, the best chain, non o ring chain that you can buy if you're looking for that. ERT3 DID, hands down, the toughest, the best. You don't have to adjust it every other ride, so that is nice. Um, wheels, we have wheels on here? Uh, no, no, no we, we, did, we did have, so we did have W wheels. We, we had a good set of Han hubs with um, the blue, uh, 
XL wheels. Yep. But we were kind of thinking that maybe that was adding, you know, because obviously that wheel with the Bulldog spokes a little stiffer. So we were kind of thinking that maybe that was adding a little bit of the rigidity in the front end that we were feeling. So uh, we, we tested it. We took the stock wheels off and, and I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I did feel a little bit of Honestly, a difference. Honestly, like uh, Yamaha wheels are very strong guys. So if you guys are looking for aftermarket wheels, great. But your stock wheels from Yamaha are very good. Uh, much stronger than a KTM wheel. Spokes are good. Once you adjust them, you don't have to work yep. with them that much. Uh, Dunlop MX-34 front, MX-14 rear. One of the best combos out there there is right now. And that's it. And we're going to go race Mammoth, right? Yes, sir. We're going to try that again yep. and uh, hopefully get a better finish. Yeah. Yeah, we just got to improve on the second day. I, to be honest with you, I was pretty happy with the first day getting two fourths. I, th I think, obviously, there's a little room for improvement there. But... Uh, I think if we would have backed up the second day and you know the part that frustrated me is it was out of my hands right. you know i had people taking me out and stuff so we'll uh we'll i think we have a uh i don't want to say a better machine because that's tough for me to go against cowie like that but I, I think i have a maybe a bike that's got a little more power and give me a little bit better start off that uphill start obviously that race it sits around eight thousand feet of elevation so all yeah. these things yep. might just help you know increase the program 2024 Yamaha YZ450F built by Eddie here. So uh, yeah, very nice bike. Thank you, Eddie. That's really cool. Yep. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can hit Eddie up, E-D-D-I-E, -E, Eddie, at KieferInkTesting.com or Chris at KieferInkTesting.com. That is the door that is cracked open for you guys to ju just jump right in. Uh, our guy Simon behind the camera is looking like he's going to fall asleep. So we're going to wrap things up here. <laughs> 12 issues, $30, Racer X Magazine. Don't forget, tons of stuff you can read in there there's pictures that simon has taken very nice photos yeah. um thirty dollars you get a free calendar and you get to read some stuff still read it's very fun you still read there'll, be, there'll be a full breakdown of this bike in here in months to come as well as you can go to my podcast the key for tested podcast we'll probably do one and wrap this thing up here but thank you very much for joining us and don't forget to uh go to racerxonline.com for more information on anything motocross supercross related we'll see you on the next build